Hello everyone, so I came across this awesome AI model called Sec4B. It's basically this next level tool for video object segmentation, you know, like tracking and masking out stuff in videos super accurately. It's got about 4 billion parameters and uses this big vision language model to really understand what's going on semantically, which lets it crush models like SAM 2.1 by over 11 points on tough benchmarks. Handles all kinds of messy situations too, occlusions, things changing appearance, and it can track forward, backward, or both ways from any frame. Pretty wild, right? It's from this group called OpenIXCLAB, and the version on Hugging Face is tweaked to work smoothly as a single file. You can grab it in different formats depending on your setup, like FP16 for a good mix of size and performance, or FP8 if you're short on VRAM. Needs a decent GPU though, say 10 gigabytes or more, but it'll run on CPU if you're patient. Oh, and get this, there's even a custom node for ComfyUI that makes it easy to use on your home PC. It's over at this GitHub repo called ComfyUI Sec Nodes. You just install it, load the model, and you've got nodes for segmenting videos with points or B-Box, visualizing stuff, and optimizing for memory. What do you think? Let's try some experiment here. Okay, so first of all, we're going to install the custom nodes for this AI model. We're going to use this GitHub repo and drop it into our Comfy UI. And basically, we can just follow their instructions. In here, you can use the Comfy UI manager if you have it and search for this name called Sec Node. For instance, we go into the Comfy UI manager and click Custom Nodes right here. As you can see, the node is up here. And you can also search again with the keyword sec node, and it's right up here. Now, I've already installed it, so I don't have to click the install button over and over again. Basically, this is how you get your GitHub repo, put that into Hugging Face, and then into your Comfy UI setup here. Now, the next step we're going to need is to download the model. There are a few different kinds of models, as you can also see in their Hugging Face repo. Just click that link and it'll redirect you to the Hugging Face repo. It shows you there's FP16, FP8, BF16, and FP32. The FP16 that I'm currently using right now is the most balanced one. In terms of quality, it's also getting there, and it still has enough data to process segmentation tasks well. FP8 is a smaller file size in terms of storage, but it has less data for processing segmentation tasks. So. In the Files and Versions section, all you need to do is download one of those files. These are the different types of model files you can choose from. Once you download it, you're going to put it into your Comfy UI folder. In my case, I'm putting it in the Comfy UI Models folder, and there's a subfolder called SAMS, not SAM1 or SAM2, but SAMS, which is what we used before for the Segment Anything models. So it goes in the same location as those segmentation models in that same folder. Just drop the file in there after you download it. I've got both FP16 and FP32 downloaded, just to test which one works better in terms of performance and how detailed the segmentation can be. Now coming back to Comfy UI, all we need is the example workflow. There's already an example workflow in this custom nodes GitHub repo, so you can find it in your folder after you download the custom nodes. There should be some example workflow JSON files in there, but that one only shows one way of testing it. I've modified mine to also compare it side by side with SAM2. By default, the example workflow just includes this part on the top that I'm highlighting right now, only the SAG model loader, video segment, and draw mask on image. I added the SAM2 segmentation part myself so we can do a side-by-side -side comparison. So let's say we arrange this in a vertical style. That way, we can compare the two models side-by-side. -side. On the left here, this is from the model loader, and on the right, we've got the SAM2 model running. We've played around with a lot of AI animations, like WAN 2.1, WAN 2.2 animate, and we've used segmentation a ton for masking objects and stuff like that. So now we're gonna try that out here. Now moving to the first setup steps. In this workflow, we've got video loading and I've added this width and height tool just to quickly resize each frame. This speeds up loading the annotation frames. This is for the SAG video segment where you can specify certain frames in the video and it can track in bi-directional mode. 
that means the AI can go forward or backward in the video to track the same object, its location, position, and so on. The cool thing about this AI model is that it can even track objects across scene cuts, not just within one continuous camera shot. It can follow an object even when the camera angle changes or there are different cut scenes. That's the real power of this model. But I found that it struggles with really complex fast motion videos, like if something's moving super quickly, the AI might not be able to detect the object, or if it's in a really dark environment, it might not identify the object well either. So let's keep it simple for this test, both with this model and with SAM2. We're going to use annotation frames. Let's say we put in the value 5. That means it'll use the fifth frame as the reference frame for the AI to analyze. Once we enter that number, you'll see the point editor change. As you can see after I click Run, the point editor shows the fifth frame of the video I loaded, not the starting frame, but it's still able to track everything from there. So you get the idea of how to use annotation frames. Let's say I'm going to select the head, arms, t shirt, vest, body, and of course, the most important part, the face. Once we've defined the areas we want to segment, we can come over here, enable the segmentation group again, and run it. Both SAM2 and the SAG segmentations will process at the same time. As you can see, the segmentation performance between these two models is pretty clear. The SEG node really refines those masking regions. Look at the cap on the head of this person in the fight scene. Yeah, it's fast motion, but it's still just one camera shot. Both AIs are able to capture the full object in the mask region, but with SAM 2.1, you can see it sometimes doesn't fully mask the cap, even though I've placed green dots to tell it exactly where to mask. And look at the back of this guy. Let's go full screen here. In the first few seconds, it's not really matching the vest and the hat properly. It only starts to recognize them a bit after about a second, but still not fully. So it's losing some of the masking detail in SAM 2.1, and when there's a pole or other objects blocking the camera, it struggles even more, especially when the character crouches down like this. Some parts of the body just go missing. On the other hand, when we use the stack node, let's get a full view of this. You can see that, because we're using bi-directional tracking from the fifth frame, it's able to capture everything from the very first frame all the way through the entire video. The cap and the vest stay masked the whole time, even when the guy crouches down and there's an object blocking the camera. It still identifies the person correctly in that region, so clearly this AI model performs better and with more detail compared to SAM2. Some people have even said they're going to remove SAM2 from their comfy UI entirely, but there are pros and cons. Sometimes SAM2 can capture something that the stack node misses. That's what I've found. Maybe you can even combine two masks, one that works better in certain frames and another that works better in others, and merge them into one master video. Anyway, we're going to try an even harder video scene to see if this can really pull it off. This example I tested is a super complex action scene from a John Wick movie. It's a great example that shows not all models perform perfectly. With really complex motion like this, sure, the character gets captured in some scenes, but when it gets to fast running or chasing sequences, neither model might be able to handle it at all even this new AI. So let's run just a short clip from this movie to test how the segmentation looks. Here are the results from both models. Now check this out. This one is definitely performing better in terms of video segmentation quality. Sam too, in some parts, can't even detect Donnie Yen's character. But at the beginning, obviously, it handles it easily because it's just one steady camera shot. But once the camera switches, especially to this shot where the person we want to segment is just a tiny portion of the frame, most current AI segmentation models just can't handle it. It's too hard for them to recognize that this is the same object from the first frame running down the hallway. In this scene, we can't segment the character at all. But as soon as we get a steady shot of the character standing still, Sam 2 starts to recognize that this is the person we want to mask. The SAG video segment, though, still can't define this character properly for segmentation in this particular shot. But then, in another cut, when we get a close-up of the character's face, since it was identified at the beginning in the point editor, as soon as the character appears with sunglasses and short hair like this, both models start to recognize him. And obviously, both AIs can segment in this part. But, one thing you'll notice with Sam, two segmentation. 
the edges around the person aren't refined very well. Because of the dark lighting and color effects in this scene, it just can't clean up the edges properly. Meanwhile, also struggles to detect the full body and outfit, especially when Donnie Yen reaches out and puts his hand on the wall sensor. The SEC model is able to mask that. But Sam too? Look, the hands aren't masked well at all. It's struggling. You can see Sam too wants to mask the hand, but it's not quite getting the fingers right. It's almost confused about whether that area should be masked or not. Another shot, when the character pulls the sensor device down the wall, you see the hand again. Sam too still can't detect it well. Some of those fine details just don't get enough masking confidence. But with seg video segmentation, once it detects that region as something we want to mask, it sticks with it. It's pretty confident that this is the area the user marked for masking. And especially when the character rolls on the ground like this, starting from this frame, you can see Sam 2 is missing parts again. So, across different scene cuts and camera angle switches, this is exactly what the AI model claims to handle better than Sam 2.1 in video object segmentation benchmarks. Well, it's not always perfect, but visually, you can really feel the confidence in how this model segments regions, as long as it has enough data to recognize the object as the one we actually want to segment. I'll be putting this modified example workflow in the video description below so you guys can test it out yourselves. Try it with your own videos using both SAM2 and SAG video segmentation. There are pros and cons. Sometimes SAM2.1 actually works better for certain videos. So there's no black and white answer here. It really depends. Next, we're going to integrate this into some of our current workflows and see how it goes. We're going to bring up WAN 2.2 Animate and give it a try, since that's the current trend in open source models right now. So, let's say we try it with this video. Super crazy motion, right? The camera's tracking two mountain bikers tearing through trails and doing all kinds of stunts. The challenging part is right here, where trees keep crossing over the characters. And let's say I want to mask this character in front, not the one in the back. That's pretty tough for segmentation. And when the trees cover the front biker like this, blocking him for a few seconds, it gets even harder to maintain a clean mask. So I want to push this to the limit, see just how far these segmentation models can go. It might fail, but let's see how it handles it. From the way we used WAN 2.2 Animate before, we relied heavily on SAM 2 segmentation plus the point editor to pinpoint exactly which person in the video we wanted to segment. For example, if I want to segment this person, I'd put a green dot on their hands and arms like this, and it would only segment that person. Well, it's the same concept here with this video segmentation. So what I'm doing here is replacing the SAM2 segmentation with the SAG model loader and the SEC4B models, and also swapping out the SAM2 segmentation node for the SAG video segmentation node. Then we just reconnect all the conditions and positive points. The positive points here are the same as the condition positive input in SAM2, so we can wire that up the same way. For the mask output, this is all we need to handle in the workflow. We'll pass the mask to the grow mask with blur node. I'll set the expand size a bit smaller, like 30, because the mountain biker is a relatively small object in the frame. And as you can see, it's able to mask part of the rider, but when the character gets covered, it disappears from the mask. That means the segmentation is doing its best with the tracking, and it's actually handling it better than SAM 2.1, especially across different camera angles, motion, and even when the character temporarily leaves the frame and reappears later. The tracking holds up. But in this scenario, it's not going to work super well for WAN Animate, because you only get a very limited pose from the control net for the mask. For example, if I tried to swap the rider for, say, a horse, it just wouldn't look right in this kind of scene. A clearer example that's better suited for one animate would be something like this, where you've got a very clear character, even though hills go up and down and occasionally block part of the bike. With SAG video segmentation, it's able to track the object really well, even from different angles, and even when the hills block part of the bike, it still keeps tracking the rider through the motion. And in the generated video I made, I replace the bike and rider with a horse. Some of the motion looks a little weird, sure, but you get the idea. Even when the hill covers part of the segmented object, which in this case is the bike, 
it still replaces it cleanly with a horse rider in the video. So that's a quick demo of what you can do with the new SAG models. Not just for TikTok dance videos with steady, static camera shots, but also for more dynamic motion videos where parts of the character or object might get loose in track. This model can still track it, generate a solid mask, and feed it into WAN Animate. And the same concept applies to WAN Vase. I think it'll work even better there, since Vase lets you use different control nets for video editing too. Alright, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. See ya.